What's going on everybody, Kleepus Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE and the Apple iPhone 13. Now, of course, being a phone that came out in October of 2021, or I think it was actually September, but you get the picture. It is a little bit on the older side by now, but up until recently, this has been my personal phone. So I did want to do this comparison to get a better idea of how this more entry level flagship phone compares to something I've been using every day for pretty much the past couple years. Now, as always, if you want to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description where I will be linking to several other videos about each of them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So with the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, we're getting a 6.4 inch 120Hz Dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 403, and a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio. With the iPhone 13, we're getting a 6.1 inch OLED display with a resolution of 1170 by 2532, so just a bit higher than 1080p, and then we're also getting a PPI of 460 and a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio as well. So in general, both phones have really nice premium looking displays, which considering they are both higher end devices, this of course is to be expected, but there definitely are some differences here. Probably the most obvious one here is that with the Samsung Galaxy S20, 23FE at 6.4 inches versus again 6.1 with the iPhone 13. The Samsung is clearly much larger, so if you're going to be on your phone a bit more doing stuff like watching videos, browsing the web, using social media, really pretty much anything, things of course will be a lot larger and easier to see with the Samsung. And I will say from experience, using the iPhone 13 over the past couple years, I personally do consume a lot of content. I'm watching YouTube videos all the time, and I'm also doing stuff like note taking and reading different web articles and really pretty much every kind of content consumption you could possibly imagine. And although I have had a pretty decent experience, I feel like it's really just because I'm used to having a smaller display. Because whenever I use something like the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, or probably more often the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, since after all I really just got this phone, the point is at 6.1 inches, the iPhone 13 is pretty small for a phone by today's standards. And even when I'm using like a $150 Android phone. Typically phones like that do tend to be quite a bit larger than 6.1 inches. So if you are going to be doing stuff where you want things to be a bit larger and easier to see between these two, the Samsung will have an advantage. That being said though, the iPhone 13 does have a really high quality image and while you may not be able to tell a whole lot from this video, the image quality in general with the iPhone 13 is a bit better. Now, that's definitely not to say that S23 FE has bad image quality, in fact, quite the opposite. I mean, as I'm sure you can see here, the image looks really good on this phone. But with the iPhone 13, again, it does have a slightly higher resolution. And overall, I feel like things just look a bit better. So when it comes to overall just the quality of the image itself, you're really not going to go wrong with the iPhone 13. But in general, I feel like for most people, the difference is really not going to be like night and day. So between the two, when it comes to the display, I feel like for the vast majority of people, the image size is probably a bit more important. So with that in mind, if you are on your phone a lot consuming a lot of content, you will probably have a better experience with the Samsung. But I know a lot of people might want a smaller display instead because even though at 6.4 inches, in my opinion, I feel like it's definitely not too bulky or anything. If you have maybe really small pockets or maybe you just want something a bit more portable. In any case, if you are looking for something that's a bit more compact, the iPhone 13 will have an advantage there. But overall, again, I feel like for most people, despite both phones having great displays, with the overall size advantage, the S23 FE might be a bit better here. Now for storage, both phones here have 128GB of internal storage, but keep in mind, neither phone has microSD card expansion, and in general, if you're coming from maybe a mid-range phone, and you're considering getting a higher-end device like these, keep in mind, pretty much no phone at this level is going to have microSD card expansion, that's really just how phones are nowadays, so if you are coming from a mid-range phone, or maybe an older flagship phone that does have microSD card expansion, again, that's a feature you're not going to get with these. That being said though, each phone does have other configurations. With S23 FE, you can get 256 gigabytes. And with the iPhone 13, you can get 256, 512, and even a terabyte. And I don't know about you, but I can't imagine using an entire terabyte on a phone. That is quite a bit of space. But keep in mind, of course, especially with the iPhone, but even with the Samsung too, the higher storage configurations are going to be a bit more expensive. So if you are really looking for storage and you do want higher end devices like this, definitely be prepared to pay at least a bit more. But in general, I feel like for the average user, even at this point at the end of 2023, 128 gigabytes is probably going to be at least decently good enough. I mean, sure, if you're recording lots of videos and taking 
all kinds of pictures. Maybe you have lots of apps and games and stuff like that. In general, if you really are more of a heavy user, then yeah, it will fill up pretty quickly. And in that case, you're probably gonna wanna get something with more storage than this or get a lower end device that can use a micro SD card. But in general, again, I feel like for the average user, if you're just doing normal basic things on your phone and you don't keep a ton of stuff on it, you should be fine either way. Now for security features, both phones do have face and lock, but keep in mind, unfortunately the iPhone 13 does not have a fingerprint scanner, whereas with the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, it does have a really nice in-display fingerprint scanner that definitely has a nice premium look. And as you can see, it does work really well. Let's try that one more time. And there we go. So yeah, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. And again, unfortunately the iPhone 13 doesn't have a fingerprint scanner, but it does at least have face and lock. And in my experience, face and lock does work really well. I've never personally been in a situation where face and lock doesn't work when a fingerprint scanner would be better. But of course I know fingerprint scanners are honestly probably a bit more popular and maybe a bit more convenient than face and lock. So if that does bother you, definitely keep this in mind. Now taking a look at the camera setups here, with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE up front, we got a 10 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And then for video, with this phone in the rear camera, we got a max recording quality of 8K at 24 frames per second. And in the front, we got 4K at 60. With the iPhone 13, up front, we got a 12 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a dual camera with a 12 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And then for video, we do have a max recording quality of 4K at 60 frames per second in both the rear and front cameras. So pretty similar to the Samsung. Now, honestly, some people might disagree with this, but in my opinion, I feel like the 8K is more or less kind of a gimmick. I mean, sure, it can be useful if you want to record a really high-end fancy video, and it is an advantage the iPhone 13 doesn't have. In fact, I've never seen an iPhone that can record 8K videos, and who knows if we ever will. So if you do want to record in such a ridiculously high resolution, then the S23 FE will have an advantage. But at the same time, I feel like when it comes to practicality, 4K is most likely going to be a bit more popular, so it's not like not having 8K will be a significant disadvantage for the iPhone, but just keep in mind if you do want to record 8K videos, the S23 FE will have an advantage. Now as far as everything else goes, despite having significantly lower megapixels at again 12 versus 50, the iPhone 13 is definitely not that much worse than the S23 FE. In fact, it is kind of debatable which camera is actually better here, but I will say with the S23 FE, the telephoto lens does make a huge difference. Now, it's not nearly as good as the telephoto lens you find in something like the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but in my experience, it does get the job done pretty well. The iPhone doesn't have terrible zoom, but in a lot of situations, it has been kind of disappointing, whereas with the S23 FE, you can zoom in really well and things do look really nice. In addition to this, although the iPhone 13 does take some pretty good close-up images, you can kind of use the telephoto lens as a bit of a macro camera with the S23 FE. So in general, if you are trying to get both zoomed in kind of distance photos and more macro type photos, the S23 FE will have an advantage. But in general, when it comes to overall camera quality, I feel like they are pretty close here. Now for the RAM room processor, with the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, we're getting 8 gigabytes of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. With the iPhone 13, we're getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with the Apple A15 Bionic processor. Now when it first came out, the iPhone 13 was pretty much the fastest phone on the market, but at this point, over two years later, as you would probably expect, it's really not so much anymore. But of course, being an iPhone, I mean, it is still a really fast phone and with this device, there's basically nothing you're not gonna be able to do with it. But at the same time, I feel like the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE is really not far behind at all. So in general, when it comes to these phones, in my experience, the iPhone is still a bit faster, but honestly, you're not gonna notice a huge difference. You will notice some depending on what you're doing, but for normal daily use, if you're doing stuff like browsing the web, using social media, watching videos, and really just using your phone as a phone. With either phone here, you will probably get a pretty similar experience. That being said though, if you're doing stuff like maybe video editing or high performance mobile gaming and stuff like that, then yeah, the iPhone will be a bit faster, but Again, with the S23 FE, you're really not going to get a bad experience either. So in general, if you do want the faster phone between the two, the iPhone 13 will have an advantage. But again, in my opinion, despite being pretty noticeable on paper, the actual experience you're going to get is pretty similar. 
Now I ran a benchmark test on each phone here using Geekbench 6, and while considering obviously the Samsung uses Android and the iPhone uses iOS, I don't really know how much value this test actually has in this comparison, but as you can see here the scores right here, so in case you were wondering, the iPhone 13 did score noticeably higher, but at the same time, again, it's not like the iPhone 13 is really in a different league, it's just simply faster, but not really by too much. So again, if you do want the faster phone between the two, then yeah. The iPhone 13 will have an advantage, but if you get the S23 FE, when it comes to performance, you're really not missing out that much. Now for the battery, this is an area where the S23 FE has a pretty big advantage. So with this phone, we're getting a 4500 mAh battery that supports 25 watt fast charging, and with the iPhone 13, we're getting a 3240 mAh battery that supports 20 watt fast charging. And when it comes to wireless charging, both phones do have it, which considering they are flagship phones, it's to be expected, and I believe they're both 15 watts. So yeah, in general, the S23 FE is going to have significantly better battery life, and with the iPhone 13, that's really my main complaint with this device, because at under 4500 mAh, this is really not a very large battery, and iPhones aren't exactly known for having great battery life anyway. So yeah, in general, if you are in a situation where you're really not around a charger a whole lot, you will probably be disappointed with this phone. Although I will say the wireless charging is pretty good, and in my experience, when I'm like traveling and stuff, I'll simply just put a wireless charger on the back. Just a battery pack like this, it does the trick just fine. So yeah, if you really want to work around, then it's not a huge deal, but still having to carry this thing around instead of simply having a better battery, this definitely can be pretty annoying, so overall, if you do want a larger battery, the Samsung, of course, will be a much better choice. That being said, though, I do want to point out with the iPhone 13, although over time a battery does tend to degrade and lose capacity, in my experience, I mean, I've used this phone heavily for the past couple years, and the battery life hasn't really changed that much, so I would say even if you get a phone like this now, and you want to keep it for a few years, the battery should probably still be perfectly fine. And another thing I do want to point out here in case you don't know, is that with the iPhone 13, it does need a lightning cable, whereas with the S23 FE, this phone takes USB-C. Now with the iPhones, they did recently change that, but the iPhone 15 is the first iPhone that has USB-C, so if that is a problem for you, definitely keep this in mind. Now, when it comes to software, between these two phones, that's a completely different story because, of course, with the S23 FE, we obviously do have Android, Android 13 specifically, but I am expecting it to get Android 14 in the next week or so, so possibly by the time you're watching this, this phone will have Android 14, so definitely keep that in mind. And then, of course, with the iPhone 13, we are getting iOS, and honestly, it's not like one software is better than the other. It's really just different. Each one has its own advantages. For example, with the iPhone 13, my two favorite features here are iMessage and AirDrop, and iCloud is pretty cool too. So with iCloud, it's pretty easy to save your pictures, and even if something happens to your phone, you're not going to have to worry about it. I have pictures from literally years ago still on my iCloud. Granted, with the S23 FE, you can do pretty much the same thing using Google Drive, but in my experience, I personally use both for different purposes, and I've just found iCloud to be a bit easier for the average user. And then AirDrop, I feel like there's really nothing that Samsung or Android in general has that compares to AirDrop. Sure, there's features like Send Anywhere, but AirDrop is just so much more convenient, but the disadvantage here, of course, is you pretty much have to have all Apple products, so if you have like an iPhone and a PC, then when it comes to AirDrop, you're pretty much out of luck. So I feel like AirDrop is pretty situational, and it's really just just a reason not to switch from Apple products to non-Apple products, because of course if you have a PC and an Android now, and you're considering getting an iPhone, then you're obviously not going to want to get it for AirDrop because it's going to be pretty much useless to you. But just keep in mind if you happen to have a Mac, or maybe just multiple Apple devices, AirDrop is a really cool feature, but aside from that, it's not like iOS is that great and Android is terrible because Android, in my opinion, is a lot more customizable. There are a lot more features like, for example, this edge panel right here. Definitely a nice cool feature once you get used to it. And the iPhone doesn't have anything remotely close to that, so overall it's really hard to say whether iOS or Android is better. You really just have to play around with both and decide for yourself. But I will say each phone does run its own software really well, and I haven't had any performance issues with either, which considering that are higher end devices, this is a bit more of an expectation. Now taking a look at the overall devices themselves, I feel like design wise they are pretty similar. In fact, just at very first glance they almost look identical. They have this same kind of boxy edge, nice sleek designs, glass backs, aluminum frames, and the camera modules are 
pretty similar too. So overall, I feel like one doesn't really have a significantly better design than the other. The only real difference between the two is the camera notches, which I have dark backgrounds, so you can't really see. Okay, here we go. So I pulled out this kind of lighter picture so you can see the camera cutouts. And as you can see, in my opinion, the S23 FE looks a lot nicer, a bit cleaner. And with the iPhone 13, it doesn't look bad, but I feel like this notch just serves no purpose. And at this point in 2023, it definitely looks a bit more outdated. But in general, both phones have really nice designs. So overall, I really have no complaints here. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? Now, in my opinion, when it comes to the things that matter most, these phones are close to being evenly matched, and honestly, if you are looking for more of a flagship experience without spending over $1,000 on a phone, either device here will be a pretty good choice. I feel like it really just comes down to, first of all, whether you want iOS or Android, because at this point, considering the specs in a lot of ways are so similar, that's probably gonna be one of the main deciding factors here. Also, the display size. I mean, clearly here there is quite a difference, and Although with the iPhone 13, the resolution is a tiny bit higher, you're really not gonna be able to tell a whole lot. So overall, I feel like most people will be better off with a larger display, but at the end of the day, that will be based on personal preference. Also keep in mind, again, the S23 FE does have more camera features. Not only can it record 8K videos, which is definitely not something you see every day, but it also has a telephoto lens, which I feel like is really important, especially in a higher end device. I mean, even though it's a lot cheaper than it once was, the iPhone 13 is still a pretty expensive phone and getting a phone like this and not having very impressive zoom is kind of disappointing so I know it's not going to matter to everyone but to me it's a bit more important so yeah definitely keep this in mind but in general I feel like again it's really going to be based on Android versus iOS because both phones are great and when it comes to stuff like price I've seen iPhone 13s going for four, five hundred dollars, which is definitely not that expensive considering this is one of the higher end devices out there. And with the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, although I'm sure this phone is going to be a lot cheaper down the road, right now it's going for somewhere between five and six hundred dollars. So in general, between these two phones, the price will probably be similar. So I probably wouldn't end up deciding based on that. So at the end of the day, if you are looking for a more affordable flagship phone, either phone will be a good choice. But for the vast majority of people, between the two, unless you specifically want iOS, because of the display size, the extra camera features, and the significantly better battery life, I feel like the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE will probably be a slightly better choice. But this concludes my comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE and the Apple iPhone 13. Again, for the latest info on pricing and availability, definitely check out the links in the video description, because especially with an older phone like the iPhone 13, this can change over time. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.